this was not just like any other election. Um, the candidate we had, Raila Odinga, is a person we follow not because of him as an individual. We followed him because of uh, an ideology. We followed him because of a certain uh, leadership ideology, institutional ideology that he carries. So much so that even if he's not around, we will actually vote for somebody just because he has said the name Raila Odinga. So the Raila we talk about is not the person you see. It is the ideology carries. The ideologies that he has fought for for many uh, years, he has been in politics. The ideologies of uh, putting Kenya together, the ideologies of fighting corruption, and uh, trying to pursue our dream as a nation among the community of nations. And that's why it becomes so personal. We are not here to love Raila as, an, and as a, a fellow human being. We are not here to love Raila just because he's a man like us. But the reason why it becomes emotional is because we are attached to Raila because of ideology. And um, the 2017 election, uh, whether it was stolen, whether it was decided before, whether it was by the international community interference, I don't want to mention the countries, but Kenyans know the countries that have been mentioned that they interfered with our election, or whether it was a game played on Azimio uh, or Raila, it is neither here nor there. The question is where did we land at this position? I raised these issues before. I said that uh, 2017, when we went to the streets, if you get time and look at Caleb Amisi through internet, you'll come across a photo that shows me engulfed in tear gas inside a car. I'm the only leader in the entire universe who has faced tear gas inside a car. Sometimes people, you know, has felt tear gas on the streets, but mine was thrown through the rear mirror of the, my car. Inside, it burst within, my driver collapsed. Was he on the accelerator when he was collapsing? Then we could have hit the, um, the building nearby on, along Kenyatta Avenue. Thank God that he collapsed when he was at the accelerator. I mean, at the, at the brakes. My door could not open. Thanks to uh, members of the fourth estate, specifically from the routers. I don't know whether they are trained, that apart from being a journalist, they are also lifesavers because he was taking his camera while the other eye was looking at me struggling. And he was able to open my door. I fell down. I got a glimpse of an air. And I was taken to Nairobi University. I mean, I mean Nairobi Hospital. Um, up to now, I still go to Nairobi Hospital for checkup uh, on my chest problems. So I have been at the height uh, of um, agitation for a better Kenya. And I raised these issues before. I raised it with uh, Raila myself. I asked Raila very, very pertinent questions. The first question I asked Baba is that, number one, uh, we've lost two pertinent elections, Musambweni, and we've lost Kiamba. Kiamba was at the heart of Uhuru Kenyatta. He was the... Mm, Chairman of Interior Committee of Administration. He was dealing directly with the Ministry of Interior. And when he lost, it was incumbent upon Jubilee to return that seat by all means necessary. In the backyard, in the constituents of Uhuru Kenyatta, I asked Baba, if Uhuru cannot deliver Kiamba, Kiamba that makes so much sense to Jubilee as a party, 
Kiamba that is so, so much important and crucial to the government of Huru Kenyatta. What makes you think he will deliver the presidents to you by hook or crook, the way they say that you are being helped by the deep state? I ask him another question. Forget about Msambuen, it was not necessary for him to win. It was just a handshake candidate. But Kiamba made me um, uh, deepen my thoughts. I, and I approached Chepukati about it. Chepukati comes from my constituents. Chepukati once vied as a member of parliament in my constituents about in 2007 during the post election violence. On an ODM party, the party that I'm representing, so I'm carrying the wishes and aspirations of Chepukati to be an ODM MP of support, if I might call it. And I asked him, what happened? Were we uh, played in this Kiamba? He said, no, you guys, uh, you didn't have agents. You are not serious. My, my election system, as it is, there is no uh, power game you can play. You, there is no uh, shortcuts. If you don't have agents, somebody can take advantage. And uh, you guys, you are, uh, we asked this during the 2017. We wrote to ODM and told them to have agents in Central Province. They didn't. So people took advantage of you, of you people from Central Region. And. Uh, I went back to Baba, I asked him that um, we, we were com campaigning and we actually went to court, to Supreme Court, uh, against Ururuto. We challenged Ururuto. Our clarion call was, is, was that they have connived and colluded with the IBC. IBC, which was headed by then Chepkat and Chiloba, Ezra. And we said that they have colluded with these two gentlemen to steal Baba's votes. That was 2017. So I asked Baba, now that Uhuru is no longer with Ruto, we are now with Uhuru. So who among them were we accusing? Were we accusing Ruto? Uhuru or Ururuto for stealing our votes. Mm -hmm. Now that they are separate, who are, we, who are we accusing for having colluded with IBC to steal our votes? Was it Ruto, Uhuru, or Ururuto, or none of the above? And the reason why I ask that question is that uh, if Uhuru, Ruto were on the other side together and we claim in the Reports, various reports that made me go to the street to almost losing my life in defense of Baba. And we are being told now Huru and Ruto are no longer together. So who carries the, I, the IBC? Is it Huru or Ruto or both of them? Because apparently the other time when we were accusing them, they were together. Did they, one of them collude with IBC without the knowledge of the other? And if one of them find that we have now won unceremoniously? Or do both of them know what they did? And this time uh, one of them is with you. And now that one of them is with us. Does it mean IBC is in between? The, we have carried a half of Chepkati and the other half is with Ruto? That was my question. Mm. And uh, in my view, I, I had uh, come acro across government factionaries. I told Baba, in my view, the IBC was not compromised by Uhuru. It was compromised by Ruto. And because Uhuru was the beneficiary, because he was the flag bearer of Jubilee, Anybody who compromises for you to win, they don't care much. As long as you become the president, even if I was the one, you go still, you compromise wherever you want, as long as you make me the president. 
So, IBC basically, the person who is at the height of it was Chepkati. Chepkati who was at the same time who gave Uruto certificate. You want him to deny either of them and they give to Baba who accused him. They were, it was not making sense. It was not making any political sense. I'm not a person who lives in utopia that you know. Uh, we live in a country that is more or less close to heaven. Things just happen. You go to, you throw your few coins on the street, somebody picks and announces these coins belong to you, please come pick it. We live in a country that is so convoluted in terms of the norms, the manners, the political habit we have created, uh, and the character and the behaviors of politicians. And that is the time uh, I went further and I made my own internal investigation. My investigation uh, showed that uh, when during the first five years of Ururuto, the person who was running the government was not Uhuru Kenyatta, it was William Ruto. Uhuru Kenyatta never wanted to be a president of Kenya. Uhuru Kenyatta was forced to be a president of Kenya by circumstances, circumstances of the ICC. That if we didn't have ICC, we will not have had Uhuru's presidency. It was by circumstances. Individually, he find himself vying for something that he is not prepared for. He never had an idea why he's vying. He never had a manifesto. He never had anything to do for this country. He vied and as, together with these co-accused so that they can get protected from the ICC. Therefore, this is a person who could sit at State House. As long as the country is running, he will not have any problem. Okay? And that's why And that's why William saw an avenue. William ran and controlled the entire government during the first five years of Ururuto government. He had his people in the deepest corners of the government, from the military, from the interior, all sectors and all dockets of the government. Whether it was the topmost, the middleman, or the lowest, from the Askaris to the sweepers, from the intelligence to the security, from the diplomatic corps to the daily officers in various government institutions. William No, he knew then that for him to get to the presidency, he needs his people. And he does not need his people in 2022. He needed his people in the government now. And in that case, Uhuru was running a handshake government that was being run by Ruto's people. He gives orders, they go zigzag. He gives orders from the top, by the time they are in the bottom, people have run with them helter-skelter. The Uhuru Ruto government was highly, intelligently, secretly controlled and run by William Ruto. And that's why by the time we had handshake, the entire government was in the hands of William Ruto. Uhuru is a good man. He loves Kenya. There are those leaders that you can leave your properties and they go elsewhere and they come back and find it the way it was. There are things that he cannot do to destroy the country. 
and probably was he to be a lethal leader was he to be one of those autocratic leaders we have across the globe yeah. then he could have destroyed William Ruto before William Ruto arrives at the ballot if I was in the hands of Uru Kenyatta I have discovered that my government went long time ago you don't need to wait Uru was staring at the lion the lion that he created himself, the lion that he fed, the lion that he has caged for a long time, the, the lion that he has seen it grow into the lion, and he was going to face the same lion. That is a mistake Uhuru did. And that's why most of the members of parliament from Central Province, we will ask them, why are you guys and not following what Uru is saying and yet you you vied together in Jubilee you are a members of parliament courtesy of his party why are you going against Uru? and they'll tell you Uru does not know us that you, you ask Uru where you come from he does not know you are his members of parliament from his constituency from his county he does not understand he doesn't know you but William Ruto knows you by three names, plus the village and your mother's name. He even knows some of us when we were born, and he actually knows that we have a birthday, and he will gift you on your birthday. Then they ask us, who do we follow? Who is our friend? William Ruto noticed the weakness of Uhuru, and he capitalized on it. I'm sure most of the time, he must have known Uru's birthday, all of them, and he could go buy something nice close to Glenfiddich and give him as a present. Knowing very well that he wants him to continue lying and sleeping as he runs the government. That was a mistake of Azimio. We were supported by a person who had lost, lost the ground. I wish if Uhuru was honest enough, I wish Uhuru could have left Raila go to ask votes from the Kikuyus himself. We could have had Raila versus Ruto, and not Ruto versus Uhuru in Central Region. If Uhuru was honest, and this is where I want to tell the Azimio people that Uru was playing a dangerous chess game of a person who has never slept hungry. This is, this is a person who has, no, who has what we call a don't care attitude. He, he'll find no need to wake up early. He will have an option. His future is guaranteed whichever way, whether he passes an exam or not. Uhuru had a mentality of a cool kid that whatever happens my future is guaranteed and that is a person Raila depended on and that's where we lost it so, and the problem is that either way Uru knew that whoever becomes a president is nothing bothering to, to them he's going to be a retired president historically and uh, globally, nothing much happens to a former president. Nothing serious, unless he is an active politician. Former presidents worldwide, they always have, a, whether they were autocratic, whether they have done whatever uh, serious uh, mistakes, they will always have a good return. Mm. And the Akabin president has no bother. It happens during Kibaki's time. People thought Kibaki will arrest Moi with all the impunities that Moi has perpetrated for many years. But Moi had a wonderful retirement. 24 years of, uh, of, of disturbing and uh, ma 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 muzzling the voice of opposition, including Kibaki's voice. But he gave him a good retirement. Nobody disturbs a retiring president. And Uru knew that. Whatever the, the case, I will retire 
and retire very peacefully. And indeed, he has retired peacefully. So, uh, what else? Uh, it was a total lie. It was a total lie. If Uhuru wanted to be lethal to his president, he will not leave him roaming around with Cheskas with uh, a heavily funded office of the deputy president, uh, abusing him inside uh, the highest uh, office, the second highest office in land, uh, telling his uh, hegemon and cronies to abuse even the mother, and you leave that person walking around aimlessly. It was not serious. It was not serious. I can tell you this was all a gimmick. And I'll tell you why. Number one, if Uhuru didn't want Ruto to step in central, he would have done that. He will have mobilized, he had the resources, he had the, um, the internal security, the army, he would have done that before. Just when they were starting with Tanga Tanga, when they did not become leader, those small, small rallies that Ruto used to address, those are the first point Uru should have stopped him. And he should have taught him how. Uru should have mobilized his members of parliament, combined with uh, the, the former, uh, the former uh, coalition of NASA, and they will have impeached uh, William Ruto in within a second. William Ruto could have only had Rift Valley members of parliament. William Ruto could have been impeached a long time ago, the, the following day after handshake. Handshake was on 9. So you want to tell me who never put a lot of effort to bring back members of parliament? He never put an effort. He left them roam around with uh, William Ruto. You leave your soldiers to roam around with an enemy. Then you come and lie that you are not together. You want Caleb to believe that? Uru was comfortable. Whoever wins, if it is Baba, so be it. If it is Ruto, so be it. So the winner in this game is Uru Kenyatta. He won. The rest is a continuation of gimmicks. In politics, there are no chances. That's why they say, you are either on my side or on the enemy's side. There's no in-between. There's no mediator. The mediator is a ballot. It's a ballot that decides who has won or who should be on which side. Mm -hmm. But on the battlefield, there is no in-between. You are either on my side or on the other enemy's side. So, and that's why I said Uhuru should have cracked the whip. We asked them, why are people in Jubilee messing you up? He kept quiet. Why are the members of parliament from your backyard messing you up? It's like now getting members from Rift Valley coming to, a, uh, to the parliament to vote against the finance bill. Do you think Ruto will still entertain them in a PG? No. He'll say you are a member of parliament because of me. You campaigned with my name. You didn't campaign with Raila's name. So why are you doing this? And he had the power, he was the president. You cannot be a president who cannot have powers to call your troops to order and you think you are going to lead a nation. But, but in your assessment... Um... Uh, Baba was blinded by the mirage of the deep states. I think Baba believes a word that is put forth to him is a gentleman. When he promises, he delivers. And he expects the same, that if you promise him something, you deliver. So Baba has suffered out of being a gentleman. That he believed the word of Uru Kenyatta. But Uru Kenyatta was not as as honest and innocent as he was but he did not have the capacity and he did not be he was not honest to tell baba yes i'm supporting you but i don't have the capacity the ground is gone the ground is gone
He didn't say that. The, all they kept on saying is that Kikuyus will change. The last minute they will change. The last minute they will change. Until the last minute. There was this guy saying that Uhuru Kenyatta does not need a lot of time in central Kenya. Yes. You are still also relying as a member of the ASMI, you are relying on that, that probably Uhuru will just go there and within two rallies, three rallies, and the ground will shift. Never. It will not. The ground of Central went long time ago out of Uhuru's hands. There is nothing, absolutely nothing Uhuru can do for people of Central to believe in him. In fact, the moment I see a coalition where Uhuru is ahead, I will run out of that coalition faster than lightning. <laughs> Okay, now, um, from, from you, you've talked about um, um, Uhuru side, Raila side. Yes, you are a member of Azmir, but do you think there are pointers where Ruto played smart? Ruto didn't play anything smart. And I want to, for people to stop over glorifying Ruto. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why. In fact, if you put me on a ballot with all that has in your head, I will have defeated William Ruto. William Ruto simply had the money, the deep state, and the energy. You can't defeat such a candidate, even if it was caliber means. You won't defeat me. But they said the deep state was with Babi. The deep state was being taken by William Ruto a long time ago. The deep state that was with Zanshek was a shell of a deep state. The real deep state had gone. And who was not honest enough to tell Baba that this thing is gone. On that steps of the Arambe house, when he was greeting Baba and making a handshake, he could have whispered something to Baba's ear that, by the way, just know I have no deep state. <laughs> you don't even give me laugh. Yes. That's not supposed to laugh. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Mm that Baba trusted Uhuru so much. And I'll tell you why William Ruto was not a strong candidate. You are as opposed to the government. When you, you oppose a government, already you have fringe support. The support base that is always against the government, it is almost 40%. If Caleb is the only person on the ballot who is against the government, there will be 40% support on my side. So that is being enjoyed by William Ruto. Whether you campaign or not, it is on your side by the fact that you've opposed the government. Number two, you are opposing the government while still in the government. <coughs> Double benefit. Mm -hmm. You are benefiting from the crowd. You are benefiting from the hustlers. You are benefiting from all the security, the money, the office support of being a deputy president for 10 years. Who has ever enjoyed such a kind of environment in the history of country, Kenya? Who has ever enjoyed such kind of environment anywhere in any democracy, in any jurisdiction you can mention in the world? You are enjoying the opposition support while enjoying the government support at the same time. So that's why I asked. And at the same time, <laughs> the highest tribe in the republic is supporting you, the Kikuyus, the biggest. You are being supported by the biggest tribe, being supported by the hustlers being supported by the opposition who was uh, per perennially for Baba and now it has moved to your side. And you are enjoying government security, money, business networks, international networks, courtesy of your office, and you still win by 200,000 votes and you still call yourself strong candidate. He was a lucky candidate, not a strong candidate.